Hello. Uh, yeah, sorry it's been a little while since I've done a video. I'm working a bit too hard uh, today. Thought I'd do something a bit different. Uh, I started my pike fishing journey 40 odd years ago. Uh, and I started it on little streams and rivers. So I thought I'd do a video about fishing these smaller waters. You think to yourself, there's not monster fish in these, but it's a, it's a very good place to learn how to start fishing. And you'll be surprised, as you'll see at the end of this, what can come out of these rivers. Uh, you're probably surrounded by loads of tiny rivers. I'm just doing a little recce at the, mo uh, the minute. It's really cold this morning. I've double wrapped. <coughs> it's minus something. I don't know what. Uh, the river looks spot on. I think most of the still waters will be frozen. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to go and set up my gear and hopefully uh, I'll get my string pull today. I actually did actually film this a little while back and had a very successful trip and uh, that day went really well with uh, decent pike and some jub but uh, when I got home I realised that the sound hadn't recorded at all which is bane of most YouTubers and uh, hopefully we'll try and piece it together and this will be an interesting video and uh, yeah do think about liking. That's all the gear I'll be using today. To be fair, that's the same gear as I always use. You could repack and go lighter, but I really don't see the point. You end up forgetting something. The way I've got my tackle balance is pretty good. I can walk miles if I need to. Let's get them rods out, then we'll catch a fish. Different tactics to use down here. You could scale down and go really light, travel with one rod, or if you're lazy like me, you just take the same tackle. I'm going to be covering the swims, giving them like sort of half an hour reach tops. And I'll probably jump in the car two or three times today to cover some different areas. I've got my rods out. One of them's on a dead bait, a lamprey, and the other one is on a live bait. On these little rivers, live baits are pretty easy to come by. If you know where to look, you don't even need a whip to catch them. You can scoop them out. I'm only using small live baits uh, with a single treble held on with a little band and uh, I've just got my rods out before I got the camera set up one of the rods bent over and uh, this is one of the problems with these little rivers they're full of jacks and uh, they'll do that sort of thing they'll grab your rod you get a screaming take and they'll drop it and they usually fish for about a pound or so uh, inquiring but hopefully we can find some bigger fish today so far this season has been really really interesting really good first five venue first trips i did were all to different venues so i've i fished five different venues i haven't fished for years uh, i managed to catch pike out of all of them i've had a couple of three good ones as well so all is looking well the trouble is i've been working too hard uh, hopefully when i switch this camera on again I'll be bent into a fish. Hopefully you can see that bait down there. <coughs> That's about the fourth position in this little swim I'll put it. When it's this cold I'm pretty sure the pike aren't moving about. Just keep dropping it into little spots. Right, what I'm doing now is I've got a pattern Austin live bait, just throwing it into the deeper water. And, uh, I'm slowly letting it run down the swim. Uh, fingers crossed, and basically it'll find a bit of shallower water. 
when it finds a shallow of water, just stop, leave it for a few minutes. Uh, yeah, you can catch some loads and loads of bonus fish doing this. When you move into a swim, put it out there for like five minutes if nothing happens. Start doing this. Cover in different areas. And uh, yeah, I think I had a, a snatch at the bait then while I was doing this. When it gets to the end of the swim, always leave it in there because I think pike follow that. Leave it in there for about a couple of three minutes. And then rinse and repeat and cover an awful lot of water doing this and catch some real big bonus fish. In fact, I have my River PB doing this. Interestingly, little Jack there taking an eel. Now, an eel was a bait that I'd uh, run out of uh, the old live bait. I get to take on an eel, it's a better fish. Get this little one back. When I was like 13 years old, it was this river my dad used to take me down to, uh, and a couple of other spots. We used to go out on a Sunday morning. Uh, catch a few jacks, the occasional big perch. I mean, it's perched to over four pound in this river, chubbed to six pound, and believe it or not, it has done 20 pound pike. Uh, not 100% sure what we're going to see today, but yeah, they can throw up the occasional surprise, as you'll see later. Uh, <coughs> I have deployed a bait. I've only got one rod with me. I'm traveling very light. Uh, I'm fishing live baits because I'm going to be moving through the swims really if you're going to fish with dead baits they work they're fine it just means you've got to sit with a dead bait for quite a long time to get a take probably better for the chub uh, but if I want to move through quickly catch a few pike we're better off with uh, live baits they're very easy to catch on these little rivers if you know where to look uh, you don't even need you can actually catch them in a net if you're pretty clued up We'll wait and see what happens. As you can see, I'm traveling silly light today. Uh, got my one rod, has a Dave Lum, two and a half pound test curve, P2. Fant I only use Dave Lum rods for pike fishing. We don't need rods like that. You get away. Some of the little carp rods, 10 foot stalking rods, would be absolutely ideal. Got a small bait runner, 50 pound braid. Don't need a bite alarm. And all the bits I need are in there, which is basically a trace, a few bits of food. In the top there, I've just got a couple of weights and a couple of bits and pieces. It might even have something, an inquiry there already. Sadly, sadly, this is not the spot I plan to fish. Interesting. I just had a little move because it was a bit stagnant. Flicked out my bait. And one thing about rivers that will never cease to surprise me. <coughs> You've got a lovely chub there. <coughs> I'm well happy with that. I'll right, look her and slip her back. Big, there's big chub in this river. And uh, I've had chub to uh, six pounds plus when i've been pike fishing a lot over five that's a small chub but well very welcome very very welcome this is a weir pool that i spent hours and hours on as a youth they used to call it the black weir i don't know if it's got a real name but i've had bream over six pounds out of there i've had carp i've had chub i've had perch I've actually got a pattern oster knocking around on the big eddy on the right hand side. And when that float buries, you really don't know. I mean, I've, there's been perch over four pound out of that weir, six pound chub and 20 pound pike, believe it or not. Uh, cracking little 
me aware of that. Not on form today. Uh, the chub I just caught was just above the weir. Sometimes I put one rod down in the weir pool and then I fling a rod out the other side. And uh, yeah, beautiful little spot this one. Doesn't probably, I wouldn't be surprised if I was the first angler to fish there this year. It doesn't get any pressure. And uh, yeah, I was very skeptical about the 20 pound bite when I heard about it until I saw a picture. I know the angler had caught it. Gutted it wasn't me. This is the river upstream. Below the below the weir, it's quite streamy. Above, it's a bit deeper. Carries a bit more water. Uh, it's like two, a river of two halves. Right, see if I can catch a fish. Right, keep moving and moving, trying above the weir, below the weir, jump in the car and never give up. Uh, Fingers crossed, this can happen. I've actually got a chunk in that landing net. Stunning fat fish. I reckon that's probably 18 pound. From a tiny little river. This way her and send her back. Well happy with that. First time I've ever fished this bit of river. I planned to get myself a smaller landing net, but no need to wait. Problem with tiny rivers. Steep banks. Right. Put this back in the net somehow. Gone. A very large fish that I'm pretty confident I can go back and catch when I can uh, when I can allow the time to do that. Christmas is around the corner. That gives me a, a week or two to do a bit of fishing. Usually get 20 over Christmas. Hopefully this year is no different. And my main thing is I want it to come from a different water. And uh, I fancy my chances on one of them. One thing to look at with bike angling, a lot of a lot, of anglers measure their, the, a lot of anglers measure their success by how many 20s or 30s they call. That's absolute rubbish. Uh, you could have somebody who lives, who's got loads and loads of money, who lives near Chew. Now that, that bloke could have racked up five or six 30s and he thinks he's God, but his personal best bike from another water is 14 pounds. And uh, same goes for a lot of waters. If you live on one water and it's a going water, you do very well. But I always think the mark of a good angler is what his 
20th biggest fishes from the 20th different water. A lot of anglers try to find it hard to get their head around that, but it's very, very easy. It's basically, i.e. my biggest fish came from chew. So that's it, I can't use chew again. The next biggest fish came from uh, another water, I can't use that. So it's easy to count back 20. Now, if you've caught a fish over 20 pounds, you've done bloody well. Your 20 of 20 from a different water is over 20 pounds. You've done really well. But that's when it gets serious. Uh, I know a couple of anglers, are, they're 20, they've got fish over 30 pounds from their 20 of different water. Now, that's one of my main goals at the moment. If I can catch a 24 pound fish from a different water, mine will be 24 pound. I'm really, I'm confident, I would never bet that in my lifetime, because that means I've got to catch a lot of fish over 24 pounds from a hell of a lot of waters. I can't see that happening. But that, that, that is a serious statistic, and it's worth thinking about that. Honestly think if your actual, your 20th fish over 20 pound is like 11 pounds, you've done pretty well, you've covered a lot of different waters and done a lot of fishing, and uh, you should be very proud of that.